Good day, here are the top stories from the Philippine News Agency. We begin in Indonesia where the search for the elusive dismissed Bamban Tarlak Mayor Alice Go finally ended. Authorities confirmed that Go has been arrested in Jakarta. The Philippine government is working on bringing her back to the answer for her alleged involvement in illegal Philippine offshore gaming operators. Marita Mwahe has today's top story. Where did Alice go? The answer is the Philippines' immediate neighbor, Indonesia. The Department of Justice has confirmed that the cat and mouse game to find the former Banban Tarlac mayor has ended in Jakarta. Guo was apprehended at 11.58 p.m. in Tangerang City on September 3, based on a report from Senior Superintendent Odi Leptuheru of the Indonesian Police. Guo is currently in the custody of the Indonesian Police at Jatanras Mabes Polri. Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Remulia said Guo's arrest proves the tireless efforts of law enforcement agencies and the strength of international cooperation in bringing fugitives to justice. He said they will apply all legal processes to hold her accountable for any crimes committed. The Bureau of Immigration and National Bureau of Investigation are coordinating with Indonesian police to take Guo into their custody. In a separate statement, Philippine National Police Chief Police General Romel Francisco Marbil said a police attaché is now in Indonesia to arrange for the turnover of Guo to Philippine authorities. Meanwhile, the House Quad Committee wants Guo to face the panel in its hearing. Committee Lead Chair Robert Ace Barber said they particularly want to know how Guo was able to acquire Philippine citizenship. Alice Guo, also known as Guo Huang Ping, is facing complaints about her alleged involvement in the illegal Philippine offshore gaming operators in the country. The Senate has ordered her arrest for repeatedly failing to attend its investigation in the illegal Pogo operation in her town. She has been slapped with graft, money laundering, and human trafficking charges in relation to the Pogos. The Office of the Solicitor General also filed a quo warranto petition seeking to unseat Guo as Bamban mayor. Despite the issuance of an immigration lookout bulletin against her, Guo was able to leave the country last July 18 for Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. Guo's sister Sheila and business associate Cassandra Lee Ong were earlier arrested in the Indonesia and sent back to the Philippines. During the Senate Subcommittee on Justice and Human Rights hearing, Sheila admitted she left the country with the dismissed mayor and her brother Wesley Guo by boat. For the PNA headlines, I am Marita Muahe. Severe tropical storm Enteng is now out of the Philippine area of responsibility, but it would still be a wet Wednesday for most parts of the country due to the enhanced southwest monsoon or habaga. In its last advisory, Pagasa said Enteng was spotted 265 kilometers west-northwest of Lawag City, Ilocos Norte. It is moving west-northwestward slowly with maximum sustained winds of 100 kilometers per hour near the center and gustiness of up to 125 kilometers per hour. All tropical cyclone wind signals have been lifted. Heavy monsoon rains are expected over Ilocos Norte and Ilocos Sur and moderate to intense rainfall in other parts of Luzon, including Metro Manila. Strong to gale force gusts could be experienced in Ilocos region, Abra, Binguet, Isabela, Zambales, Bataan, Aurora, Bulacan, Metro Manila, Calabarzon, Mimaropa, Bicol region, Western Visayas, Negros Island, and Northern Samar. Meanwhile, heavy rainfall has caused La Mesa Dam to overflow as the water level reached 80.19 meters. This is past the dam spilling level of 80.15 meters. Pagasa said areas along the Tulyahan River may be affected by sudden floods. Ipo Dam in North Zagaray, Bulacan has also released water due to the heavy rains from Enteng and the southwest monsoon. Pagasa said the dam's water level was last recorded this morning at 100.59 meters or close to its spilling level of 101 meters. The water levels in La Mesa, Binga, San Roque, Pantabangan, and Caliraya Dam have also increased. 
President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. has called on local government units to strengthen their waste management efforts as severe tropical storm Etting leaves the Philippine area of responsibility on Wednesday afternoon after inundating most parts of Luzon and the Visayas. In a social media post, the president underscored the need to address waste management issues left by the typhoon, expressing regret over the massive flooding caused by improper waste disposal during the onslaught of the southwest monsoon and typhoon Karina last month. The president has directed the LGUs to take the lead in responding to both the effects of Tropical Storm Enteng and the deadly landslide in Antipolo Rizal. Presidential Communications Office Spokesperson for Natural Calamities and Disasters Joey Villarama meanwhile said that while the LGUs will take the lead, the national government is ready to assist when needed. On Monday, the president said his office monitoring Enteng affected areas as a whole while LGUs are addressing the situation on the ground. He said over 480 million pesos has been allocated to health logistics in order to provide quick medical aid in areas affected by the typhoon. The Department of Social Welfare and Development earlier said some 16 million pesos worth of assistance have been distributed to over 300,000 families affected by ending, while 2.67 billion pesos worth of relief resources are still available. Meanwhile, the Department of Public Works and Highways has begun its clearing operations on affected national roads with over 1,700 pieces of equipment prepositioned to ensure streets are passable. Meanwhile, the Philippine Red Cross is appealing for donations for those affected by Tropical Storm Enteng and the Southwest Monsoon. PRC's chairperson and CEO Richard Gordon said that any donation, no matter how small, will be welcomed in order to continue providing assistance to the disaster-stricken communities. PRC Secretary General Dr. Gwen Pang stressed the importance of donations for buying essential items such as drinking water, food, and other necessities for the affected communities. Pang said these donations will improve their response capabilities, particularly in search and rescue operations, healthcare services, and recovery of affected individuals. For details on how to send donations, the public may visit PRC's social media pages. In other news, tremors coming after days of heavy downpour, two earthquakes struck the town of Homalig in Quezon province on Wednesday morning. A magnitude 5.3 earthquake jolted 43 kilometers northeast of Omalig at 7.16 a.m. The quake was felt at intensity 3. In Quezon City, a magnitude 4.9 quake followed 38 kilometers northeast of the town at 7.55 a.m. The quake was also felt in ports of Quezon, Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, Tagaytay City and Cavite, Calamba in Laguna, Antipolo and Tanay, Boac in Marinduque, several ports of Bulacan, Pasig City, Makati, and Quezon City. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology identified this occurrence as Doppelit when two earthquakes of nearly the same size happened close together in the same area. Fevox expects aftershocks from the magnitude 5.3 quake, while both earthquakes are not expected to cause any damage. And that's the latest and the biggest stories on the PNA headlines. For more news updates, please visit our website, pna.gov.ph, or our Facebook and X account, Philippine News Agency. The PNA headlines is also streamed via the Servicio Facebook page. You may also watch the PNA headlines through the Philippine News Agency's YouTube account and via the News and Information Bureau website under PNA News. I am Stephanie Civiliano. This is the PNA headlines, bringing stories to the United Nations.